everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the session. My name is Chaddy. I am from Ottawa, Canada, and uh, I lead business development uh, for Telco within Lenovo. And with me are my two co-presenters. I'll let them do a quick introduction. Hi, I'm Jay Bryant. Um, I'm from Rochester, Minnesota. Lead cloud, cloud architect at Lenovo, um, and also a longtime OpenStack contributor, uh, former Cinder PTL and current core member, um, and now on the OpenStack tec technical committee. Easy for me to say. And next. Good afternoon, I'm Su Jin. I'm the solution architect working for Intel, and I'm actually based out of Shanghai, not far from here. I'm probably one of the the one who stays closer than <laughs> everybody one else in the room. So I've been I've been working a, a, a bit on the edge computing, 5G, involving on the early stage of the SC Mac architecture definition and and other edge related programs and activities like like AECC and etc. So I look forward to to interact a bit with you you all and uh, my co-presenter in the next 40 minutes. Thank you. Uh, so our agenda is basically uh, as follows. I'll kick it off by talking a little bit about what our view of the edge is, uh, Intel as well as, uh, as Lenovo. We'll talk a little bit about some of the edge requirements uh, and essentially how, um, how we're seeing them evolve. Uh, then I'll, I'll, I'll switch it over to uh, Su Jin, who will talk a little bit about some of the challenges and some of the solutions, and Jay will then uh, finish it off by talking about how we could manage all of this. So when we look at the edge landscape as it is today, um, I'm engaged with a lot of customers. I see a lot of customers who already started with their NFV journey are now starting to slowly creep back towards the edge, starting with the near edge central offices and eventually at the far edge. The, the ones that are deploying far edge are specific to industries is what I'm seeing. Um, but there still are a lot of requirements, and the requirement churn has been, I would say, quite a bit. Uh, and we'll go through, through, through some of that. But the key thing here is that um, when you look at how NFV was deployed and how it's been consumed, um, some of the principles might apply to Edge, but there's also a lot of differences. The main one being is that now you need to manage all of these thousands of sites across your network. Um, and if we've learned anything from NFV, it is that you cannot have siloed solutions. In NFV, when we, I, I was with a customer last week and he was going through like their NFV journey and talking about essentially how they deployed NFV, they literally had a siloed infrastructure for each of their vendors because no two vendors were supporting the same infrastructure. As we move towards the edge, that type of approach does not work you need basically to standardize on that. You need, to, you need mechanisms in order to manage and maintain that. And we'll talk a little bit through that. So this leads me to the next slide, which is we have a variation of, of edge uh, terminology. So at the far edge, we're talking telco edge, we're talking IoT edge and enterprise edge. Um, the access to connect that back into your central, say, infrastructure, you really cannot deploy edge with verticalized solutions, meaning with siloed solutions is what I mean, what I'm trying to say, because it becomes unmanageable. You end up with multiple edge architectures that essentially are not, and, and, and your scalability will not, your network will not scale. Operations become a nightmare. And as I mentioned, when you look at your different edge, say segments, um, the variation of use cases for each of these require essentially different sets of applications to be deployed, whether it's at the edge or at the central data center. Um, personally, I'm seeing a lot more, uh, you know, OpenStack, for example, at the central data center, but also a need for containerized solutions at the edge. So essentially, now you have these hybrid environments where parts of your network or parts of your application will be running in a container uh, depending on where it's located the other part running an open stack or basically a, on an infrastructure as such, um, again, if it's more central. So what, we're, what we believe is the right approach is basically an end-to-end -end edge architecture 
that essentially allows you to standardize on the various solutions. Um, and what we mean by that is different customers will have different solution stacks and interoperability will become a requirement. So essentially having parts of your network running on OpenStack, other parts running on you know, container-based solutions, as, as we see it, is, is, is really a requirement. Um, and all of this depends on the applications. So I'm not saying all the applications are ready for containers today. As a matter of fact, some are not even being thought of. But the idea is that you have you know, uh, a multi-service infrastructure that essentially, uh, so, or sorry, multi-service uh, common service that it was running on that same infrastructure. So essentially the whole idea here is to try to standardize this infrastructure as much as possible. Um, and again, all of it needs to be interoperable, open, self-managed, uh, auto troubleshooting. Everything needs to be developed in an automated mechanism. And again, this applies to the various edge, as you, as you, uh, the various edge locations as they are. So whether it's your far, far edge, whether it's your far edge, your near edge, or your central data center, uh, essentially the idea here is to basically have a common mechanism to operate all of these edge locations. So at a high level, I'll go through some of the requirements, um, and then I'll hand it over to Su Jin, who will talk about some of the solutions. But when we look at requirements for edge, you know, again, like I said, you need a, a constant, a consistent operating paradigm across your various edge locations. Otherwise, you end up with these very siloed solutions that are not going to be manageable. Um, you need to be able to perform this at a massive scale across thousands of sites across your network. Uh, and what that means is basically you need to be able to deliver services to, very, to remote locations but centrally manage it all. Right? Central management is going to be critical to this. Um, and the reality is, is that you're going to have a lot of locations where you don't have technicians. So being able to deploy, manage, troubleshoot, upgrade, um, all of that in a remote way or centrally managed way is critical. You need to be able to address uh, applications that have strict or low latency. And this is obviously one of the main use cases of Edge is basically pushing all of the acceleration technologies as closer to the compute power close to the user to allow basically for that low latency, high throughput requirements. But in some cases, it doesn't make sense to deploy high powered FPGAs and GPUs everywhere. Your business case might not make sense at that point. So essentially standardizing on how this, these edge, say blueprints will be deployed uh, in a way that actually makes some business sense. So you might have a lot of locations, for example, that are very limited in the amount of power or space that they have. You, the idea here is that I would basically, might ha I might have an aggregate site that has basically uh, all of these requirements from a compute power perspective. So I'll be able to install GPUs and FPGAs there for acceleration and basically interconnect the smaller edge sites basically to that aggregate site, for example, for, uh, for some of that, uh, for some of that processing. Um, in the end, manageability needs to be automated. So everything has to be deployed with automation in mind, right from zero touch provisioning uh, to basically seamless upgrades, unified management. So again, most customers already have existing NFV uh, infrastructures. We're seeing a requirement where a lot of customers want an integration between their edge, uh, edge locations or their edge cloud story as well as their NFV infrastructures. Um, and what that means is basically if I deploy an edge orchestration system, it has to integrate back into my NFV, uh, NFVI. Because if I don't do that, then I end up with two separate basically systems that I need to manage. Uh, integration northbound into provisioning, monitoring systems, all of that can flow basically through uh, a unified system. Um, the ability to react when issues arise, so things like self-troubleshooting or auto-troubleshooting, where, for example, if 
and Jay will probably talk through about, about this during his session. Um, you know, when you have, let's say, a failure on a hardware component, the ability to detect that and move workloads off that edge node, right, um, prior to the actual hardware fully failing, I think that's a major requirement of edge. So the ability to react when issues arise. And at the end of the day, um, like I said earlier, everything that we do needs to have a mechanism by which it's centrally managed because the reality is, is you're not going to have certified technicians at every site. So you're going to end up with untrained technicians at the site. So what you need to be able to do is push those configurations, those upgrades. And Jay will talk through this as he goes through his, se his section. And last but not least, we talk a lot about, you know, edge requirements. Central offices typically have data center-like characteristics. Uh, we're not worried about those. But really, there's going to be a lot of locations where humidity, dust, uh, extended temperature range, even vibrations all need to be considered. So as part of, you know, the, 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 por the portfolio, um, these have all been considered. Um, and basically, we're taking that into mind. Now I'll hand it over to Su Jin, who will talk about some of the challenges and how to address them. Thank you, Shadi. So in the next few slices and, and 10 minutes, I'll elaborate a bit more on the challenges and the requirement that we are overseeing the entire edge architecture, especially from a, a platform and the networking perspective. And then we'll talk a bit some of the solutions that we are, we are proposing on how to address that. So first of all, about the requirements, I'll, I'll bring you all into this networking architecture. And with that, we talk about some of the restrictions and network requirements that are tied very closely to, to each other, right? And, and first of all, let's look at the use cases and, and the KPI. Like after all, what does it really matter is the use cases, the, the business cases, right? How do you gonna leverage and make use of your edge to power a different verticals and different industry that bring true meanings to the end users. But while you are trying to push forward the business cases, you, you do have to consider like the networking architecture. Like first of all, there are different sizings of uh, a network architecture right now. Like from the far left moving slowly to the right, like started with the, the small cells, where you are looking at like a, a broad coverage and a physical units on the small cells out everywhere in the enterprises, in the indoors, and then the outdoor small cells. And then eventually when you're moving out, like you have an on-prem central office cell tower, then to the core network at the end will be the data center. So we're looking at about like each of these advantages of the location will bring to you. What does it mean, right? Like of course, you have a small cells that close to you. You have a, a edge computing and the central office that close to you will offer better latency and you will try to make use of this advantage of the location and the latency benefits that is bring forward to power some of those really latency sensitive use cases, such as like in, in the smart city, you are, you are looking at uh, V2X connectivity, right? How do you make sure that you notify something wrong with the cars or something wrong on the road conditions, and then you are trying to make that decision after the analytics and inform the end user immediately. Then slightly moving, let's say we're moving into the, the, the aggregation point, right? Where you have a larger footprint, better road, con better physical environments. Let's say you're gonna have a 45U of the rack where you can insert multiple servers, better air conditioning and, and better capabilities to withstand a different type of the uh, uh, weather and extreme condition, right? Then you are, you are afford to insert a more high density servos and high density solutions into them and see how do you manage that, right? Because we, we, we have to consider the, the, the restriction as I am listed here is that so when you are very away towards the far edge, which on the left hand side, then you have 
the requirements to consider the power that you might be not putting more than 50 watts of a, a, a servo. And while you're moving slightly towards the end or the, the, the right, right, then you, you have to re-architecture your existing central office from, from the telco 4G to telco 5G because there are things that you can change, there are things that, that you, can't, you can't change, right? So ultimately, like the, all those requirements, that how do we actually able to come up with an optimal platform, the right CPU and the edge architecture? And, and most importantly, right, it, it's all driven by business, and yet we have to consider what are the right TCO model at the scale and do not compromise on the security and the scalability that the entire this edge architecture will, will bring to you, okay? So next, I'll, I'll talk a bit on the platform level, right? Just now when we look at the, the network architecture, the requirements, how does the synergy being brought forward by the different verticals. And when we nail down to the multi-tenancy and services, we are expecting the, the platform not, not just to host a single application, but in the meantime, we are expecting that, that we will make a really great use of our platform architecture. Having said that, like, it's a multi-tenancy platform. How, how could we come up with an architecture that will be able to really cater for the requirements based on the CDN, where you, you want to design it to save traffic with a, a good low latency. And in the meantime, you want to have your platform architecture will able to power something like a V2X and ADAS, again, a latency sensitive, but then it's, 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 it's also looking at like a very strong analytics capability at the, at the edge. So one, one single platform on nailing down into a platform level, it's very important that how you're gonna re-architecture your, your CPU like on a, a new architecture fashion, you partition your CPU to work on a different workload, even like a CDN itself, if you are talking about a, a CDN to, to Netflix, CDN to, to Tencent Cloud, a, a CDN to some other telco cloud, will we'll have a different latency and the bandwidth requirements as well. So it's really important that how do we re-architecture the entire thing and with the right amount of uh, accelerator, like GPU, which bring you a transcoding and, and AI capability, and also some level of acceleration like uh, uh, FPGA, which can be used for analytics, can be used for searching, and some other like smart myth, right? So it, it, it's about like, how do we design a platform thereby, a multi-tenancy platform at the optimized performance while you maintaining the quality of services, the same level of the service license agreement, and again, security is like, how do we make sure a very effective isolation that we bring forward over here. So what are the solutions and, and opportunities that we bring forward? Again, we flash back on the first slides that I was, I was show, showing, the network architecture. We made a conclusion that when you are moving towards the right-hand side of the, the tiers, right, talking about the size, when you have a better physical environment, that will meaning that you are having a, a, a better security and the data and isolation, and then you have a more better or loosen, or, well, a, a better conditions of a, a physical environment, like air conditioning, et cetera, that which you cannot ignore. Like the power bill itself costs m millions and millions for the, for the telcos and the enterprise per year, right? We could not ignore that. And, and last but not least as well on the management and p maintenance, which is how you're gonna manage all these servos and, and how do you do a very quick and secure on board very quickly. And on the use cases as well, like towards on the left hand side, we, we, we decided that we're gonna focus on the new use cases of, of what are the right use cases that fit into the, the near and the far edge. And the most important that at the end, the edge will be serving the end user, that the latency and the user experience are, are all in, in inter tied to, to each other. So we want to focus on the first tier top level of the edge on the performance per watts on the thermal. While on the right hand side, we, we look about like designing all this edge to fit for composability, flexibility, and, and the scalability. And talking about the edge cloud 
platforms as well, right? We, we summarized that there are, there are multiples, verticals from autonomous medical application enterprises and to the cloud gaming, all will really take a good advantage of how the edge can, can bring to them, right? And we are working very closely with our partners, customers, Lenovo's on underlying our, uh, our hardware together with uh, Lenovo servers, software solution, and on our open source software, uh, OpenNest, which brings forward a rich software edge stacks that has uh, elements of security, routings, and, and, and controller together. And to work very closely side by side with all the network function to power different sorts of uh, verticals like AR, VR, video analytics, and, and AI. But all this we want to bring to one ultimate goals is that we want to bring forward, we, we hope that this partnership right, will, will bring you a, a very good hardware and software co combination that offer you an end-to-end -end solution, a ease of use, secure environment, a, a good isolation to power multi-tenancy software services, a very satisfying improving, improved performance per watt, and in the meantime, a good security in terms of the isolations of all these different applications. And a quickly walk through, when we look at the platform characteristics by network location, um, a, another slightly different view when you look at the network architecture, but literally it's trying to tell you that the density from the powering all the IoT and the telco edge on-prem all the way to the core network, right? The, the scales and, and the distance and all the different type of the bandwidth requirement. And we, we, we do, we do have like a different type of a, a compute power started with a general processors from, from Xeon to Atom and then coupled together with our uh, hardware solution like FPGA, uh, GPU, network accelerator to provide the necessary requirements based on the different edge applications and location. Uh, with that, I'll pass on to my colleagues, uh, Jay, to, to talk about more solutions and deep dive. Thank you, Sujin. So, we've talked about requirements, we've talked about problems, uh, we've talked about the cool hardware that's out there uh, available making Edge possible, and uh, now we're gonna talk about what my team's working on to uh, solve some of these problems and hopefully ease everybody's transition to 5G and Edge. Um, so, you know, the hardware is one thing, and all the locations we're dealing with is, is another challenge. The only way we're gonna be able to handle these challenges is through automation. Um, and that's what, what my team, uh, Lenovo, has been looking at is, what can we do to handle you know, more data than a human can possibly imagine, potentially more systems than a, a human can manage? You need automation, you need databases, you need something that's keeping track of the system for you. Um, also, you need when you have so many systems, you need to be keeping an eye on them, know when they're gonna fail before they fail. Um, and security must be ensured through all of this. And this is part of what I'm going to be sharing with you here in my part of the presentation. Uh, integration is key. This is one of the things that, you know, as a person with Lenovo, I'm proud of, um, is that we are really working with Intel and our other partners to integrate between software and hardware. And this is part of what's going to make uh, the transition to edge and further out uh, successful. You know, you need to have integration of your hardware into your inventory, into your deployment automation, software, monitoring, workloads, it all needs to be, be integrated, interoperable, uh, as Chatty was saying earlier. Um, and the other thing that we, we demand, at least as Lenovo, it needs to come out of the box. You don't uh, want your customers to have to set, them, uh, set it up themselves, it should come out of the box that way and ease and speed the move to cloud. So, Lenovo Open Cloud is what we're working on. Um, it's a way of, of simplifying this data center that, that is now expanding out of the walls of the data center and into the world. Um, it allows for planning and preparation of your data center so that instead of, uh, you know, w our, our vendors for OpenStack, for, open, for Kubernetes, for VMware, they've got good automation to get it out of the box, but 
they require the user to know what is their data center and set all of that up beforehand. Well, we know what your data center can look like when we ship it to you. Let's help so that you don't have to set that all up. And that's what we're looking at here is an end-to-end -end solution for deploying your data center. Getting your firmware updated out of the box and in day two operations. You know, having an API that's open for you customers so that if they want to go beyond what we provide out of the box, all the APIs and the, the uh, tools are there to do that. It's a modular design. As I mentioned, you know, we have an OpenStack solution. We're also working on a VMware solution, and it's uh, modular. We can m work with other cloud solutions in the future, Kubernetes, OpenShift, et cetera, and it's all open. So um, this is kind of what our philosophy is with this, an end-to-end -end approach. The customer, when they open, go for an open Lenovo open cloud solution, uh, we start with them, help them order it, and it, when it arrives at their data center, they have all the tools for it to be deployed and integrated all together. Um, we use a metadata database to monitor the, uh, the configuration of the data center so that they don't have to fill that all in themselves. They put in their IP address ranges, they set up you know, their DNS servers and the basic things, and then we handle the rest from there. Taking, you know, deploying a cloud from what can take weeks down to something we can do repeatedly in hours. We do this using tools like uh, Ansible Tower, Xclarity, which is our uh, utility for, for uh, hardware management, firmware management, and uh, image deployment. Um, and then also using uh, other tools that are open source that, that we use the APIs all working together along with an automation database to enable all these utilities to work together seamlessly. Diversified workloads are possible with this. We have a, a service provider domain that, that runs and manages the entire environment and then allows our customers to deploy, you know, if you want a Ceph cluster in there, we've got an automated solution for deploying that. If you want OpenShift, we're working on getting deployment of that in the future. Uh, VMware Cloud Foundation, um, you know, and then of course, obviously OpenStack is a deployed solution. The architecture for li it looks kind of like this. We have a service provider domain that runs, um, you know, on a, a highly available cluster of three or four systems. The, um, then we run our services on top of it, which are the things like Xclarity. Um, if you're running an OpenStack cloud, you have Director on there, um, along with the control nodes. They're virtualized, so you get out of the box a highly available solution that doesn't need to, um, you know, you don't have to have four nodes just to run your director and, and uh, um, control plane. Uh, we can do it all in one along with our additional services in that box. Then you've got your workload domain and an edge domain, uh, all of which can be managed from our Lenovo Open Cloud control plane. Um, one of the things that is key, especially as you're talking about edge, is having integrated monitoring and benchmarking. We hear this from our telco customers especially, um, the need to be able to benchmark their solutions. NFVs are new versions that come out that get rolled out to the data center, um, and they need to be able to tell that after they've deployed that new solution that their system is still running um, as it was. So we're working with LOC to be able to deploy the system um, with benchmarking included in that service provider domain that they can run repeatedly against their environment and see that they're getting the same results from their hardware and their software. Um, edge, enhan edge enhancements, so things that we're keeping in mind here um, as we work with uh, you know, LOC, we're designing it with Edge in mind, is being able to do low touch provisioning. Um, you know, when you've got, you're not just talking about rolling racks into a data center, you're sending people out to hundreds if not thousands of locations to set up systems. You need to be able to do that in a way that is, is repeatable and be able to be done by people who are not necessarily your technicians. Um, need to be able to you know, plug a phone into the thing, activate it, have it call back to the data center and say, hey, I'm here and be automatically integrated into the environment. And those are the things we're working on enabling um, for IoT and that sort of environment is being able to you know, 
plug it in, have it automatically discovered by our open cloud infrastructure? Does it have an FPGA? Does it have all these other cool bells and whistles? We put it into the metadata database, and then we're able to pull that back out through the automation to determine, okay, where do we want to use this in our cloud? Is this a compute node? Is it a storage node? Is this an edge computing device? Is it, you know, something else? Security, um, one of the things we're looking to be able to do with this is to send VPD um, on the system that's being shipped so that the customer knows, okay, when that box is plugged in in location XYZ, we've already sent them to the open cloud solution, um, you know, the information on that node, and they know that the node that reports into the, the system then at that point in time is the one that they ordered, um, they know it's secured, and that they know that they've got a, you know, at the edge, the hardware running that they expect to have running there. This is a new challenge that we're going to start seeing as we see hardware move further and further away from the data center is having to ensure that you really are connecting into the hardware you expect. And we're looking to s solve some of those challenges with the way that we're managing and discovering the hardware. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this is kind of a continuation there. Devices can be automatically discovered. Um, that's a new functionality and something that, you know, as, as Lenovo, we're hoping to continue to work with our partners like Intel to enhance how much we can discover automatically and integrate into our environment, into our clouds, that hardware. So, summary here, um, you know, w we need standardization, interaction between the, the hardware and the in the software we need to have be able to have common blueprints for customers to easily discover and deploy their systems getting the right workload to the right location we need to be able to monitor those systems and have it automated is the system running hot do i need to worry about that are we leading to failure an out of the box solution to collect that data to monitor it and to give customers the tools out of the box to be able to write their own automation to enhance what we have provided to them. Um, need to have an ecosystem of technologies and the right partners to provide it. Got to have automation, got to have aut acceleration technologies to meet telco needs, have the right ISVs working with us, toolkits, etc. So this is what we're looking as far as a solution with, with Lenovo, with Intel, with our partners for cloud computing and moving to the edge. And at that point, invite my colleagues back out. If there are any questions, we'd be happy to answer them. Questions? Concerns? Ah, excellent. Yes, that's one of the things that we're able to provide. For those that couldn't hear, the question was, do we also do <coughs> BIOS configuration out of band? Yes, um, that's actually the first step that we do in our deploys is, you know, RAID config, uh, UA, UA, UEFI boot configuration, you know, figuring out what network art devices are on there and setting all of that up right from the beginning. Um, and we're hoping to, you know, right now we're doing that through X Clarity. In the future, we'd like to be able to use Redfish um, and expand beyond, you know, to, to be able to further manage and configure the systems. Good question. Thank you. That's a good question. Um, I'm, I'm going to hand it over to my Intel friend. <laughs> we, I, I would like to be able to do that. Is that something that would be possible, do you think? Sorry, could you? Yes. So in specific, the question that I was asking is, okay, we've, we've addressed the, the idea of being able to do the BIOS updates and be able to configure the 